Hey guys, Phil here at Woods Tree Farm. You just saw me unload 28 bags of gypsum. I actually need to go back to the co-op and get more because my truck couldn't handle a full pallet. That's how much I ordered. I'm gonna load up the trailer just so it's easier for them with a forklift just to put it right into the trailer. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna tell you some more about how bad our soil is here on the farm and what our plan is to fix it and what that means for both our planting for Christmas trees and flowers in the upcoming season. So stick around, it's gonna be a fun one. What a pretty day out here. It is really, really windy, but other than that, gorgeous. You can see these blue skies, temperatures in the 70s. It is just perfect, perfect weather. This is the other half of the pallet of lime. And uh, I wanted to share some more details with you about our soil and why I now believe firmly we have had really heavy losses, particularly with our fir trees. And if you've been following for any time, uh, I've shared a lot along the way about our successes and failures. And fir trees in particular here have been a big failure. And we knew all along that we are kind of borderline in terms of having the climate that's right for fir trees. Well, I've been quick all along to blame our losses on the weather. So our, our first year we had a long uh, drought through the summer. We were late to start watering. And then last year we were watering through the dry spell that we had in June and July. And I thought everything was going well. And then September, everything was super wet. Well, that may have been a contributor, but now that I know how bad our soil really is, I think our, our trees just really didn't have any chance to survive through those tough periods at all because our soil was so poor. And not only are the nutrient values all kinds of wrong, uh, we also have some poor drainage. We have some drainage issues. And that was something that uh, no one had to really told me anything about and I didn't understand until recently what soil drainage really means. All around our property, there's slope. I know a lot of times people comment like, oh, you have a nice flat property. It's really not flat at all. There's nothing that's less than like 5% slope over this whole thing. And uh, what I always thought drainage meant is that the water will shed. When we get heavy rains, it runs downhill. There is nothing that stays sopping wet for an extended period, except for like two low spots that we have on the property. And we're not planning on planting any trees there. So I've always thought all along that our soil was well draining because it is able to quickly shed water when it falls from the sky. Well, that's not what well draining soil means. So I'll show you something about the well draining soil thing here in a minute. So I had to laugh looking at the bag of pelleted gypsum here, right on the back of the bag, it says for trees and shrubs apply two to four cups around the drip line gypsum is particularly beneficial for evergreens which require lots of calcium and acidic soil as far as the acidity goes we're right where we want to be we're right around all of our soil tests have come in between 5.6 and 5.9 one of them came in at 6.0 so we're right around where we want to be in terms of the ph and the acidity but the um the calcium levels on every single test say low 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 Low, low like off the charts low and on top of that we have some other issues which I'll go into more detail here in a second on the topic of drainage I am now standing in our family campsite area in the back corner of our property and this is on a hilltop water sheds in every direction from here but there was a tree stump that I dug out of here weeks ago and we haven't had any measurable rainfall in about 10 days and there is a hole here from the stump that I haven't filled in. Let me show it to you. That hole there measures, I know it's hard to tell scale, but that's like easily three feet across where the water is and you know, five to six feet across above up there. But anyway, you can see there is water sitting in this hole. And like I said, we haven't had any measurable rainfall for quite some time. 
this hole should have drained if we had well draining soil but we don't we have virtually impermeable soil so what that means is that there are certain varieties of trees that just can't tolerate getting their roots wet and having them wet for an extended period of time so unless we completely change the makeup of our soil or unless we completely change the way that the soil drains there are going to be certain types of trees that we're going to struggle to grow um, we have some other options with what we can do we're probably going to experiment with planting the trees on mounds the thought there is that if the trees are elevated then water is going to more easily escape from where the bulk of the root mass is and um, we might give that a try i'm just concerned if we do that the summer heat that we get is going to dry out the mounds that we plant our trees in but anyway that's something that we're going to experiment with in the future uh, soil drainage is something like i said i've recently discovered and we're really having a challenge with. So now I want to share with you some specifics about our soil test and I stayed back here in the woods. It is so windy. The wind kept knocking over my camera when I was out in the field. So I'm back here and uh, I'll share with you some specifics and one is just a piece of feedback. If you get your initial soil test back, if you're just starting out and the results aren't great, the common feedback that you get from tree farmers and from extension agents, at least what we got, is you only need to test every couple years. And now that I know how bad our soil actually is, I wish we had tested every year rather than every couple because maybe we would have come to this conclusion a little bit faster about what we need to do around here. So I'm going to share with you first the 2019 result from way up at the front. This is what we're calling the original firs plot. So this is up front. We have trees planted there now. Many of them have died. The second year we planted more. Some of those died. Then we planted more. Anyway, we've been through a couple courses now of high mortality in that plot. So I'll share with you what, what the original tests suggested. So as far as the phosphorus goes, the soil tested at having just one pound per acre. I talked to one guy um, about this and he actually has experience in doing lab work for soil tests and he says where he has experience their equipment actually doesn't even go below two. So just to share with you how low that is. That is incredibly low. So on this scale it is like off the charts low and we need a lot of phosphorus and of course phosphorus is one of the key components to driving root growth and of course if you don't have strong root growth especially if you have periods of, of uh, drought the trees are really going to struggle to draw up the moisture that they need from the ground so on the next thing for potassium we were at 149 pounds per acre that is uh, medium on the scale and uh, we did um, with our initial treatment add some of that to to the initial plan but uh, the other thing that really surprised us was the calcium level came in at 887 pounds per acre uh, which was also medium this was actually on on this test shows as like medium minus so between medium and low and um, then the next thing that shows up is that our magnesium is very high at 223 pounds per acre. So in a situation where you have, and I, I'm going to kind of share with you some tidbits about what I've absorbed in the past couple of years. I am not sharing this but from the perspective of like, I really know what I'm talking about because I don't. But from what I've gleaned and talking with others and from watching some YouTube channels and listening to some podcasts about soil science, not just for Christmas trees but for other crops if you have your calcium and magnesium way out of whack in one direction or the other you're going to have some sort of trouble with your plants so we have really high magnesium really low calcium and I just shared with you on the bag um, it actually says right on that gypsum bag that calcium is essential for root growth and I've also learned it's essential for uptake of phosphorus which we didn't really have much phosphorus to begin with so we're like low phosphorus low calcium yes our tree have struggled to develop roots I believe and that's part of the reason why we've really struggled to grow fir trees in particular. Pines have done okay. Pines are kind of naturally occurring. They're all around me right now. They've done okay. The Norway spruces have done okay but all of our firs of every variety that we've tried have had extremely high mortality. 
So that was our 2019 test. We brought in, I don't even remember, I think it was 12 or 1400 pounds of a custom blend of fertilizer according to this treatment. But when I went back and looked at it and I looked at the correspondence with our extension agent, we actually didn't do anything at the time to address the calcium level. They only supplied a kind of a custom mix of an, of an NPK fertilizer blend that didn't do anything about the calcium. Um, we didn't do anything about lime. Our, our original soil pH was at 5.7, so we didn't do any lime. Lime can carry some calcium, but uh, yeah, so we didn't do anything to address the calcium. All right, so fast forward two years. Here we are, spring 2021, and we are evaluating our soil again. We took a sample from about the same area as that original plot I just shared with you, and results changed a little bit. Let me share with you how. Our phosphorus went up from one pound per acre to nine pounds per acre, still low on the scale. Now registers as a low plus, L plus, according to our Virginia Cooperative Extension test here. So we went from a low minus to a low plus. We moved that much. We're still too low. On the potassium side of things, we're largely unchanged. It was at uh, 149 pounds per acre in 2019, and we were at 144 in 2021 still medium on the scale. Calcium levels actually went down considerably during this period from 887 in 2019 pounds per acre to 616 pounds per acre. So we moved from medium on the scale for calcium to low on the scale in two years of growing a lot of grass, a lot of weeds, and a little bit of trees. And no surprise, the magnesium is still registering at a very high level in 2021. In summary, given that imbalance of calcium and magnesium, given that our phosphorus was so low, I don't think our fir trees really had much of a chance. Add on top of that some tough climate conditions. We had some drought periods. We had some periods where it was too wet. And our soil doesn't drain well, we've come to find out. Uh, we, I think, are really going to struggle to grow firs on this property. So what can we do about it? Well, one of the things you already know we're doing, we're getting the gypsum and we're hoping to condition the soil with calcium and we're hoping that helps break up clay and improves drainage and just does that kind of stuff. I think we're gonna have to add lots, lots, lots more if we really wanna have a long-term change there. The other thing that we're doing is, you can see all around me here, there are a lot of wood chips on the ground in this section. We've got about an acre and a half back here and I've spread 10 big dump trailers full of wood chips out over this section here. And over the next two years, we're going to do a couple rotations of cover crop. We're gonna plow the soil over. We're going to plant buckwheat this year, something over the winter, I'm not sure yet. And then uh, mustard for the spring and then buckwheat again next summer. And after each time, all of that organic matter from each of those crops is going to get tilled into this soil. We're gonna do some ripping in here to break up the clay down, you know, 18, 20 inches. And like I said, we're going to use the big uh, pl uh, plow, moldboard plow, to fold this soil over and hoping that this really, uh, this effort ha really changes the soil up here compared to what we have elsewhere. That's part of the story. This is really just a big experiment. I have no idea if this is going to work, but it it's got to create soil conditions that are better than what we've been planting in. At least that's my thought. So that means over the next two years, while we're fooling around this plot up here, we're going to be planting new seedlings in a nursery bed, in a, in a large nursery bed that we still need to make and we will be transplanting larger trees into this section of field once it's ready. So this is gonna be a fun little experiment. We're also going to plant crops here that can act as a field for photographers so we can monetize this a little bit. And we've had a lot of interest from photographers to come out to the property and bring their clients and do photo sessions out here. So having a field of buckwheat in the summer, having a field of yellow mustard flowers in the spring. And I think um, you know that along with the other things that we have out here can be a big draw in bringing people out. But back to the point of soil. We're really hoping this changes things here. And uh, we'll have kind of an immediate test of this on a much smaller scale with our sunflower patch, which I've shared in previous videos. We spread a bunch of wood chips there already. We've already turned that soil. I will be tilling it in another couple days. And then um, we're going to let it sit for a little bit. Then we'll spray the weeds and we'll plant our sunflowers for the 2021 sunflower patch. 
So if you got any questions about what I shared in this video, uh, let me know and drop them in the comments below or send me a direct message on Facebook, whatever. Send us an email through our website. Any of those methods are fine. You guys already do that all the time. I get numerous inquiries every week from people interested in Christmas tree farming and interested in the content that we're doing on these videos. So uh, happy to hear from you guys. Happy to help out any way that I can. That's going to wrap it up for me today, guys. Thanks for following along and listening to me jabber on about our soil for the last 10 minutes or so. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.